on behalf of our family here at Grace, uh, we extend our love to Bob's family, all of you gathered here today, and to those that are joining us uh, via live stream. Uh, we're thankful for your presence along with us as we remember, give thanks, honor, and uh, give our hearts uh, to this moment when we are receive the Lord's comfort in His Word. And so, um, thank you. It's a time when we need to be, even though uh, distant, together um, as we have the service for, for Bob Preece. And, and I'm not going to tell you, but Robert W., I know what the W stands for, so <laughs> you'll have to ask some of the family. It's, it's actually a family kind of uh, uh, thing, so yeah, it's good. It's good. I love when families have those, those deeper meanings to, it's not just a W, it goes deeper than that. Bob just wasn't just some guy. He was a dad and a friend and a brother and um, an uncle, a grandpa, and on and on we could go about all of who Bob was in our life. Uh, for us, a brother in Christ. And so we begin in the depth of who God in His goodness birthed in Bob a life of faith. That's why the casket today is covered in a white pall. It is a remembrance of baptism, of this moment when God reaches into our lives and says, you are mine, and I love you through it all, <laughs> even in moments like these. And so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have come together to seek God's comfort in sorrow, to rejoice in the promise of the resurrection, and to live in the peace that God brings. Our Lord Himself said, Come to Me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, You wept at the grave of Your friend Lazarus, and You consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Bob. Dry the tears of all who weep. Calm our troubled hearts, dispel our doubts and fears, and lead us to praise you for having brought him to faith. In your rising from the dead, you conquered death, and you opened the gates to eternal life. Strengthen us with your word, and lead us through this earthly life until at last we are united with you and all your children in glory everlasting. Amen. Let's sing together our opening song, Beautiful Savior.
And these beautiful, familiar words of our Good Shepherd, Psalm 23. And you're invited along with me to give voice to these words as we say them together. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for You are with me. Your rod and Your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows." Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Continuing to receive the comfort of God's Word, these words that speak the comfort of resurrection and life. Again, there's opportunity for you to give voice to God's Word together. The Apostle Paul writes to the Romans, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus gives us this comfort. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Death has been swallowed up in victory Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then we also will appear with Him in glory. We will be before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. Never again will we hunger. Never again will we thirst. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd, and He will lead us to springs of living water. And God God will will wipe wipe away away every tear from our eyes. Let's pray. God of all grace, You sent Your Son, Jesus, to destroy the power of death and to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because He lives, we too shall live. Comfort us with Your promise that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from Your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now the reading of God's Word. Words that um, would have been familiar to Bob. Uh, These were words that uh, the family recognized and understood as a part of his life and the hope that we have. And um, 
the first reading, this beautiful picture of the strength of the Lord in the midst of weakness. And um, don't we all have those (laughs) weaknesses? Bob did too. But we live in the strength that the Lord grants. And so these words from Isaiah 40. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. In his understanding, no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. One of my memories about Bob is uh, when he would get on a roll, right? And Bob had some of those, you know, a roll. He would get on this roll, and I would just look at him and go, huh? <laughs> there was this kind of what, you know? And uh, these words speak of some of life that comes with that kind of mystery, uh, a bit of uncertainty. And yet what God wants us to be certain about is the resurrection. That death will not have the last word. As hard as it is to understand all of that in the midst of life, Death will not win. God has the power over it. And so he speaks from God's word. The Apostle Paul writes these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we all will be changed. In a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. But the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Holy Gospel from John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd. He does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. and There shall be one flock and one shepherd. This is the gospel of our Lord. And let's sing together, How Great Thou Art.
great and good shepherd's name we begin. Dear family and friends of Bob, there's a real part of me that feels like I should begin our time together with something like this. A Lutheran preacher and a rabbi walk into a bar. So much of my interaction with Bob was, uh, you know, in those moments of, of levity. But life comes heavy, too, right? And we're experiencing that moment now. This perspective is hard, and all of you live with your own kind of sense of perspective of Bob's place in your life. I mean, you have tucked in your heart the perspective of memories and, and great joys and deep sorrows. And, and it's all kind of the way that in this, a moment like this, you kind of see kind of through that perspective. But for a moment, I'd like to share with you a perspective of Bob through, through God's unfailing love to see the truth and the hope that God brings in time of separation and death. We're given this perspective in Psalm 51. 
These words help us see in clarity the depth of what God has done for you, for me, and for Bob. From Psalm 51, verses 1 and 2. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions and wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. The perspective of life according to God's unfailing love is number one, that sins are forgiven. The brokenness, the heartache, the mess of life, forgiven. It should not be lost on any of us today as we came through all of that snow. I mean, just got dumped on today with with just inches upon inches of white. But if you look close, before it's been plowed and kind of dug up, there is this beauty and pristine kind of covering to the earth. The Lord, as He would speak with the perspective of an unfailing love that brings forgiveness, He would say this, though your sins be as scarlet, they are as white as snow. Bob needed forgiveness. I need it, and so do you. And the unfailing love of God gives it. Our sins are forgiven. The blood of Jesus cleans us up, washes, removes the stain of guilt and shame. God's unfailing love gives us another perspective of how to see life in the midst of death. From Psalm 51, verses 10 and 11. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. The perspective of life according to God's unfailing love is this. Relationships are reconciled. The effects of our sin is that it separates us from God and one another. And that is real to life. That was real for Bob and it's real to you. And we feel it today, the separation that death causes. Reconciliation is this kind of beautiful word about bringing what was once kind of torn apart back together. To bring back together. And this is our hope in Christ Jesus our Lord. A love that brings us back together with God. Who, as we heard, will never let us go. The Good Shepherd will hold us close. He promises His presence now and forever. No matter where life goes, no matter where it's been, and no matter where it ends, in Jesus, God is with us. And in Him, He is with you. And one final perspective In verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And now we see that in the perspective of life according to God's unfailing love, 
joy is restored. Mixed in with the tears. It was true with Bob. There's still laughter. (laughs) There still is joy, but it is a deep joy. God's Word says the joy is not just some good joke about a Lutheran preacher and a rabbi that walks into a bar. By the way, both of those get confused with me, with my (laughs) my beard. It seems one and the same to a lot of people. Um, But it's not just that kind of chuckle. The the joy that, that God brings to us in His unfailing love is the joy of salvation. Tears give way to joy. The heartache gives way to healing. And today, death gives way to life. This is the hope and the promise of life eternal, not because of anything we have done or Bob did or didn't do, but because of God's grace, what God has done for Bob, for you, and for me. There is eternal life, and with eternal life, eternal joy, every tear wiped away. We only need come in faith and trust in Jesus. It doesn't come any other way. I know that in your heart and mind, there's so much going on in a moment like this. But I pray that you live with this constant clarity and the perspective of an unfailing love where sins are forgiven, where relationships are reconciled, and where joy is restored. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue in uh, what had to have been, I'm sure, Bob's favorite hymn, How Great Thou Art. Let us pray, and as we pray, we'll be praying for the Lord's mercy, and then the response from you, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, we praise you for the great company of saints who have finished their lives in faith and now rest from their labors. We remember especially our loved one, Bob, whom you have redeemed by the blood of your Son and received as your dear child through holy baptism. We thank you for giving him to us as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your compassion, comfort all who are sad in this hour. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. We praise you for your love in Christ, which sustains us in life and death. In our earthly sorrow, help us find strength in the fellowship of the church, joy in the forgiveness of sins, and hope in the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. You do not leave us comfortless, but You strengthen and care for us through Your Word and sacrament. You give us family, friends, and neighbors to help when there is loneliness now and in the days to come. Brighten our future with a firm trust in Your promises and care. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's join together now In the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive God's blessing and his benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing song, Go, my children, with my blessing.
So may you go in peace that endures forever. Amen.